Alright, so these are some of the rebrands that I know about that happened in 2020. So the Poco X2 was a rebranded Redmi K30. The Poco F2 Pro was a rebranded Redmi K30 Pro. The Poco M2 Pro was a rebranded Redmi Note 9 Pro. The Poco M2 was a rebranded Redmi 9 Prime. The Samsung Galaxy F41 was a rebranded Samsung Galaxy M31. The Realme Nazo 20 Pro was a rebranded Realme 7. And then this year, Xiaomi came out with their first product of the year, the Mi 10i. And guess what? It was a rebrand too. The Mi 10i is a rebranded Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G. The only difference between them was, well, their logos. And that is what gave me the idea to make this video. Why do companies actually rebrand their phones? And having a look at these rebrands, well, they gave me some thoughts. I am Devatan and you are watching Tech Isle. And today, let's check out why do companies rebrand their phones. Let's begin. Rebranding products or the whole company itself can help you gain access to a very wider audience. For example, OnePlus felt that they were not having enough audience as a company which caters to the tech enthusiast. Because the truth is, the proportion of such people is actually very tiny. Like the number of devices which can run Cyberpunk 2077. So they completely revamped their company. Not Cyberpunk, OnePlus of course. So OnePlus started launching accessories like wireless earbuds and TV and they gave a new look to their Android skin which is Oxygen OS but more importantly they launched a couple of phones without the OnePlus Soul in it which were the OnePlus Nord N10 and OnePlus Nord N100. The OnePlus Nord N100 was a rebranded Oppo A53. Also what are these names for OnePlus? OnePlus did this so that they can have a wider reach among the audience. Then if you have a look at the Realme Nazo 20 Pro it was designed degrading the cameras but increasing the charging speed to almost double from 30W to 65W of the Realme 7 to give off that gaming vibe which is I think ultimately what the Nazo series is trying to be a budget gaming powerhouse then there are rebrands which are aimed to have a better reach in both the offline market as well as the online market like the Poco M2 Pro was launched primarily aiming at online sales so that the Redmi Note 9 Pro can be comfortably sold offline. This is a major reason why companies rebrand their phones so that they can have a phone from them both for the online sales as well as offline sales. Rebrands can be done to sort of give the customer a guarantee that the negative image has been taken care of and that the company is actually trying to solve that. The major problem with Redmi phones is the software. Maybe along with breaking phones with an over the update. The MIUI is laggy has bloatware, is heavy on the phone but more importantly has shady ads in the UI. This is in my opinion the factor that is inhibiting the growth of Xiaomi. So instead of just completely doing away with ads, they thought that they will launch some of the good phones under the Poco brand. The Poco skin is although MIUI in itself but it doesn't contain ads. Hence the Redmi K30 became the Poco X2. The Redmi K30 Pro became the Poco F2 Pro. The Redmi Note 9 Pro became the Poco M2 Pro and the Redmi 9 Prime was the Poco M2. Also the first phone in the Mi lineup of phones from Xiaomi was the Mi 10i which again is a rebranded Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G. The Mi lineup generally doesn't have ads, it's just Redmi. So rebrands can be done to sort of fade off that negative image. So this is quite an obvious one. The time that it usually takes for a company to make a phone is about 12 to 18 months unless you are Escobar. In that case, you don't need to develop a phone at all. The company will have many parallel works, that is they'll be working on multiple phones at the same time but the time needed to develop one phone from scratch is about 12 to 18 months. But instead of making that phone from scratch, if they you know, rebrand it, the time comes down drastically. I'm not quite sure of the exact numbers but if a phone is just rebranding another phone from the company then I think they can put it up for sale within a couple of months. Time is money, right? That's what they say. And in business, the value just becomes more. So the company, if they rebrand a phone, they can focus on the other priorities. For example, Poco was able to release seven phones in just 10 months, out of which only two were original. Original as in non-rebranded. The point is rebranding, whether you like them or not, can save the company a whole lot of time, which can be put to better use. Another reason why companies rebrand is to reposition the brand. This might happen due to various reasons. For example, the competitors might have increased uh, so that 
it becomes difficult for the company to differentiate themselves or if the product map has evolved successfully or if the company is slowly but surely changing from what they used to be. Coming back to OnePlus example, OnePlus wanted to show that they are in a transition period. They want to show that the future is different for them. Although it might sound like I'm promoting OnePlus, I surely am, I hate the new OnePlus. But OnePlus realized that if they want to appeal to a wider audience, they will have to rebrand a tiny bit. Thank you so much for watching and consider hitting that sweet red subscribe button if you haven't and also hit that thumbs up button. That's it for today. Hope you liked it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Because 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 the truth also this year's also me also the